My daughter Claire started dating a security guard. They dated for three weeks and then she began to see signs of, of uh, possession and, and control. She decided to end the relationship and that's when the stalking started. My sister, Gerda, she decided to end her life back in 2005. She'd been married for about 25 years and throughout that period she suffered incredibly. He would text her up to 50 times a day declaring his love for her and he was in total denial that um, they'd even split up. He was texting her with comments like, if I can't have you, no one else will. Claire's work colleagues and, uh, and uh, flatmates were saying to Claire that she should report him. One day she was walking home after her day at work. Again, he followed her and she turned around and said, if you don't leave me alone, I'll report you. He turned to Claire, went very close to her face, and he said, if you report me, I will kill you. He then stroked her face and he left. Eventually, one of her flatmates reported him, and I remember us both feeling relief. He appeared again in, in, on the outskirts of Harvey Nichols outside the store, and eventually he was arrested. And that was the last time that Claire ever saw, ever saw him. The suffering itself wasn't something that was too apparent or was well known through to the rest of the family. It's one of the problems is that someone actually feels shame in wanting to leave their partner. With Gerda, it was exactly that. And what happened was she was regularly beaten, she was controlled, manipulated, and that ended in her making that decision on that cold evening to walk outside into her annex, put a rope around her neck and hang herself. On the 13th of September, he walked into the store, he crept up behind her. She was unaware. She was smiling at, um, at a young woman opposite. And, uh, and he put the gun up and he shot my daughter in the head four times and then turned the gun on himself. Unfortunately at the time, a few of us that did start to understand what was going on didn't recognise that the services that are available to victims of domestic violence, such as Refuge, provide. If you're a victim of, of, of domestic abuse, there's no shame in that. Tell as many people as possible. Tell your friends, tell your family, talk to professionals, together we can, we can work to help. It's difficult for the victims to actually approach anyone. It's more easier for them to normally talk to someone that they trust and that's where we'd ask you to help because obviously if you're approached by someone that trusts you and they start to confide in you then, that's, then you know that there's this service available. Domestic uh, violence isn't necessarily behind closed doors. It can happen to anybody. It's ex-partners, partners, it can be honour-based crime and um, the more people know about it and the more people that show their support, the more lives that, that will be saved. If Claire had known about refuge, I truly believe that she may well still be alive.